when I spar, I like to really mix it up. So mm -hmm. I do a lot of different things. I have pretty much three types of modes when it comes to sparring, where one is more self-defense focused. I don't get to record that that often because I prefer to have it as random as possible with trying to get multiple opponents involved and stuff, and that can be really difficult to arrange. But for that stuff, I try to emulate more some stuff I learned from Krav Maga because I trained that for a little while, uh, as well as a lot of stuff I've learned from Nick Grosses, a huge source of inspiration for me, both personally because we both overcome some things in our lives early on, and also in terms of the way I view self-defense. So that's one mode, the self-defense mode. One thing I'll do is I'll either test my endurance a lot. It's important that you're able to keep fighting and you're going to experience an adrenaline dump. Mm. Even more so, I would say, in a self-defense situation than in a combat sports situation. Mm -hmm. I've uh, fought in the ring, and not much, but I had uh, my kickboxing debut against a much bigger guy. It was a little bit scary, but I just put that to the side. But I was able to prepare all day long. For a self-defense yeah. situation, which I've also tried a few situations, it's just so random and, and the adrenaline just spikes. You really need the stamina. So I do this self-defense type of sparring. Then I like to do something like every 20 seconds or something, you got to drop to the ground and do some push-ups or some burpees or something just to get the pulse going and stuff like palm strikes. Some of it can be difficult to do in sparring, like the elbows and stuff. And, and groin kicks, you definitely need to work up for those. Then I have more of like a combat sports mode, which I do a lot of sparring with. It looks like kickboxing and perhaps there'll be some grappling and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. but with some fancy kicks from Kung Fu. I draw more on inspiration from Savat than Sander. Oh, Sander oh. is more... Muay Thai based, where Sabat is more similar to the Kung Fu I learned, the art of Sabat. It's a kickboxing style and it's a fought wearing boots. So similar to a self-defense situation, you would typically not be baffy. It kicks a lot with the instep rather than with the shin. It has a lot of fluid combinations with a lot of nice boxings and, and then followed with stuff like hook kicks or crescent kicks and side kicks and stuff you don't see that often to touch on the final thing because talking about my three modes so we got the self-defense mode the combat sports mode very savat inspired and with some grappling on the ground then there's the animal style mode if you look through my channel i have a bunch of different types of animal style sparring videos that's the most difficult part to pull off safely honestly because it's Sometimes you do light, very light contact sparring and you can do stuff like controlled pokes just near the eyes if it's very controlled and light. Recently I recorded a pretty hard sparring session with Animal Styles and I used the, the Animal Styles more to, uh, as a setup for my kicks which could really connect and then uh, I struck to the back of the head which can be dangerous but yeah. at least you don't poke the opponent in the eye. What would you say that traditional martial arts could do better to be seen as more legit? And what do you think modern martial arts like an MMA gym can do to be you know, appealing to people that also like traditional martial arts? To begin with, with traditional martial yeah. arts, I think it's a matter of pressure testing and not having these insecurities. Sometimes they feel almost like they have to live up to the expectations built from mm -hmm. movies because... It's not like a superpower. It's just like mixed martial arts. You got just some tool. And depending on how you train them, that's really going to influence how you're able to apply them under pressure. It's a little bit complex because with traditional martial arts, there's a lot of techniques which are not allowed in combat sports. And of course, you get the cliche response that my Kung Fu could defeat any mixed martial artist, but I can't do it because it's not allowed. And sure, some of that is true. To some extent, you can do some dirty stuff. The mixed martial artist can do it as well, if he has it instinctively in him to do it. But it's also like psychologically, if my life depended on it, I hope I would use some of the more dirty tactics from Kung Fu or uh, Krav Maga as well, where you poke the eye and 
whatever you can do, but psychologically, I feel more like beating up a person than destroying a person. It's also the hardest thing in the world to do, it's almost unrealistic to expect, is to defend yourself without hurting your opponent. That's a very good TED talk on YouTube on self-defense. But this expert, it's a real eye-opener, I feel, he mentions how it's more dangerous to encounter someone who's just a straight-up psycho, who's willing yeah. to do anything, than even someone like John Jones, who's both has yeah. the physical attributes and the training. Because one person is trained to beat you up, and the other person has something in him which doesn't require Wants any to kill skill. You. It's a psychological thing. The same with Kung Fu, like, you got your techniques where you go for the throat and sure, if, if I do this, it's going to be very dangerous. But psychologically, most people are not wired to do this. Mm -hmm. Because that's one of the things you can train outside of by doing Taolu, which is the same as Kata. Some visualization and stuff. And honestly, I don't even want to practice those kind of things with going too heavy into the visualization. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to have those... Uh, those instincts. Only if everything else fails, then I hope I can have those and I probably won't. If you're gonna maim, just fatally injure a person, then you're gonna be prepared to deal with that both in terms of the law and also in terms of your yeah. country. But I was touching on, for sure, traditional martial arts, from my perspective, they need to be more transparent about not having superpowers some are for sure honest about what they do but not everyone and also they need to do a lot of pressure testing a and you see a lot of pressure testing on my channel some of it is more realistic and some of it is a little less realistic because i try to pressure test everything yeah. so we try to do like spear combat pole arm combat i haven't done spear but guandao which i just said spear because people know what a spear is it would be like a life or death situation uh, and then very quickly if I was to do it as realistically as I approach MMA sparring. But nonetheless, I still want to have some experience having to adapt to a situation and also test out like even some of the flashy stuff with like spinning the weapon and chopping down just to see what I can get away with and what I can't. Because that yeah. really provides an educated perspective for when you're doing the forms. So I want to see more of that from traditional martial arts. From modern martial arts, I think we're starting to see more and more where they're more open-minded to different techniques. Yeah. So more traditional techniques actually be proven effective with the proper training. Me being a father as well, I imagine that you have ambition to one day have your son right next to you, like being a little bit older, throwing kicks and punches, doing some sparring with you. How would you want to approach getting your child into martial arts? Who knows, perhaps my son is watching this interview in the future and he never had any interest in martial arts. It's always been important for me that I'm not gonna determine the path. I'm just gonna provide the best opportunities, but I'm gonna show all the paths I'm aware of, including the martial path. It's helped me so much in my life, so I definitely, want to offer and present that for my son and then he can choose but there's one thing that isn't a choice it's just like going to school is also not a choice for him and yeah. this may be almost even more important self-defense i'm gonna teach yeah. some self -defense yeah music. most definitely and, and and i think this is important also if he develops a passion like mine for martial arts then we're gonna practice a lot of stuff then i'm gonna make sure to differentiate the context like the difference between self-defense and yeah. combat sports and martial arts. That's how I try to like. It's a good thing to distinguish between them all because they all, it's like, um, it's like a tree. Martial arts is a tree, mm -hmm. but they all root very differently. They all branch out very differently. Well yeah, said. Man. Totally said yeah. agree. That, that's uh, a great metaphor actually. Yeah. Cause they do connect to some yeah. extent and some more than others. Like, some of the more fancy martial arts is yeah. with an emphasis on the art stuff. Some mm -hmm. of it will help you in some ways in terms of self-defense, just the ability to move, just the coordination. Yeah, yeah. But man. Even a lot of the techniques can be powerful, but risky to try out. But 
it has some self-defense connection, but not that it's that much. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and with combat sports, there's more connection, but also there's a lot of stuff. Which That's missing, different. yeah. After years of free content, I need a helping hand from some of you. You can support me with $3 each month or 5 or 10 for a few extra benefits. Thanks for listening. Visit my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash sendragon.